in November of 2021, Springfield Armory brought out their Garrison 45 1911 style pistol. It was intended to be a full featured pistol at a reasonable price and they really pulled that off in spades. I tested the Garrison when it first came out and it offered a whole lot of features and not a whole lot of price. Then in April of 22, Springfield Armory came out with the Garrison model in 9mm which proved to be every bit as good a pistol as the 45 was and it also represented a great value for a 1911 pistol for those who wanted to go with a 9mm. At SHOT Show 24 just a few weeks ago, Springfield Armory introduced the Garrison Commander Length 45. Like the other pistols in the Garrison line, the Commander 45 offers a lot of features at a very reasonable price. And like the other Garrison models, the Commander Length model is also available in stainless steel and in 9mm in either blue or stainless. The blue versions in either 45 or 9mm sell for $868 MSRP with the stainless versions going for $917 MSRP. And for the features that you get and the quality that this thing is made, that is a great value. Like all of Springfield Armory's 1911 pistols, the Garrison Commander is constructed with a forged steel frame and slide. Makes them strong and tougher than a pine knot. The barrel is four and a quarter inches long. It's a stainless steel match grade barrel. It's got a little bit of a swell on the end to help it fit very tightly to the bushing and it does fit very tightly to the bushing. There's no play either laterally or vertically in this barrel when it's locked into battery. Another thing that I really like about the barrel on this that you don't see on a lot of 45 pistols is that it's fully supported and has an integral ramp. The classic 1911 design having the feed ramp on the frame creates a little bit of a step in between the feed ramp and the barrel mouth. These can be polished and mated very well and 1911 gunsmiths have been doing this for a hundred years to make them run with anything besides the ball ammo that the 1911 was really designed for back in the day. When I was growing up you'd have to take a 1911 which cost a fortune to begin with and then spend a fortune getting the thing to run. Not so with these. Using the integrated ramp, these things will feed anything. That integrated feed ramp, coupled with the lowered and flared ejection port on the Garrison Commander, means that you're not going to have any problems with failures to feed or failures to eject. Mine ran a variety of different ammunition styles without a bobble of any kind. This thing just absolutely runs like a sewing machine. And when I first started shooting it, I even ran it dry. I wiped down the oil off of it to take my pictures of it and when I reassembled it I decided to try shooting it without any oil on it and it still ran just perfectly. The barrel hood also has a witness hole in the top of it so you can look in there and see if you've got a loaded chamber. The thumb safety is set up for right hand use only. It's an extended safety, easy to use, and very slick and positive in operation on and off. It's very, it has a nice solid click to it without feeling mushy or anything like that. The hammer is skeletonized and rounded and nestles perfectly into the upswept beaver tail grip safety. There's just enough of an upswept beaver tail on that where even a fat hand like mine has no chance of getting pinched in between the grip safety and the hammer. There's just no way that's going to happen. The grip safety also features a generous memory bump on it, which is very important if you want to ride your thumb safety to help you in recoil control. It works great for that. A lot of grip safeties, even those that have a memory bump on them, don't allow me to do that comfortably. I have to shift my grip to get the grip safety to where I want it to be. Not on the garrisons, both the full size and on the commander size, the grip safety works perfectly for me. The mainspring housing is flat and checkered very finely, which is exactly how I like it to be. I really like the grips on these and for those of you that don't know, the Commander version takes the full length grip. It's the same grip frame as the government model, just a little bit shorter slide with a four and a quarter inch barrel for the Commander length as opposed to the five inch barrel of the government length. So any grips that'll fit a government or a Commander will work for these Garrison Commander pistols. And one of the first things a lot of people do when they get a pistol like this is they take the grips off and put something else on, which is a really easy and inexpensive way to personalize a pistol to your taste. But these grips are wonderful. They're thinner than the standard profile GI style grips and the thin grips really handle great. I love a thinner grip on a 1911. These fill the hand just enough without becoming so thick that they get cumbersome. 
The grips on these are wood. It appears to be some kind of a rosewood. Really pretty grips. They are checkered in the double diamond pattern and have Springfield Armory's cross cannon logo laser engraved into them. It's a very handsome set of grips. They really look good and they feel great on these pistols. The recoil system on the Garrisons is GI style with the spring and plunger instead of the full length guide rod. A lot of folks like the full length guide rod. I have nothing in the world against them and I've got a bunch of 1911s that have full length guide rods but I really do favor the GI style recoil system. That's the way the 1911 was designed. It's good enough for John Brown and it's good enough for me. The sights are low profile in the three dot pattern that's so popular among shooters these days. The front sight is dovetailed in so it's drift adjustable for windage. The rear sight is also similarly dovetailed in and has a set screw to lock that in place once you get it where you want it to be. The rear sight is of a Novak style slope snag free configuration and they present a very quick and easy to obtain sight picture. You just line up your three dots. That's the way a lot of people like their sights to be these days. I personally prefer the rear sight dots to be blacked out so that the front sight pops without having the rear sight confuse things visually, but that's just me. The three dot sight configuration has been the most popular among combat shooters for a long time now, and this is a very nice, effective, easy to use set of sights on the garrison. The trigger is lightweight aluminum, skeletonized for further weight reduction, finished in the white, vertically grooved. It has an over travel adjustment screw on it and the trigger pull on this is just excellent. It came in just over two pounds, two pounds, 1.8 ounces to be exact. It's crisp, lets off very nicely, just a little hint of take up before it engages and zero over travel. This is a fine trigger and it makes the garrison capable of fine accuracy. Using just plain ball ammo, I was able to get groups of about an inch and a half at 15 feet standing offhand and going to the premium ammo, tighten that down to about an inch. This pistol shoots very accurately with 100% reliability. More than accurate enough and reliable enough to stake your life or the lives of your loved ones on it. The Garrison comes with one magazine. It's a steel magazine with a steel follower. It works wonderfully, but it's a seven round magazine. Additional magazines are available from a whole lot of different people. Any 1911 magazines will work. You can get them from Springfield Armory store. My favorite aftermarket magazine are these eight round magazines from my friend Lynn Thompson at Never Unarmed. Lynn Thompson became famous for running cold steel knives. Now he's running Never Unarmed. And among the products that he offers is this really well-made eight round magazine. It's got a rounded plastic follower on it. It's got a bumper on the bottom. It works wonderfully with any 1911 pistols that I've tried it in. The Never Unarmed magazines have all the features and all the quality of the familiar premium brands at less than half of the price. Check these out at NeverUnarmed.com. The classic load for the 1911 that it was really designed around was the 230 grain military ball load of full metal jacket round nose. A great modern approximation of that load is from Arms Corps. It's a 230 grain full metal jacket round nose moving about 800 feet per second. Just a wonderful all around load for the 45. Taking a step up in power from the ball load, we've got double tap ammo's 230 grain full metal jacket flat point. Like the ball load, it's a 230 grain fully jacketed bullet, but the flat point gives it a little bit more smack on the target and it's running a couple of hundred feet per second faster than your standard military ball load. It's a great all around load. A great load for social work in the 45 ACP is Double Tap's 230 grain bonded defense. It's moving out close to 1,000 feet per second and the very well designed jacketed hollow point bullet 
does a great job of expanding in gelatin. We tested it at a gun site a few years ago, and it's really great stuff. For carrying the garrison, obviously any 1911 holster will work. You probably got some laying around as I do. A fine choice for that is this field and stream model from Rob Leahy at Simply Rugged Holsters. It's a pancake design, carries in high and tight to you. It's very easy to conceal and very comfortable to wear all day long. The pistol fits in wonderfully, but it's also got a spot in front of the pistol for an extra magazine. So you're carrying a full pistol and a reload right there in the same holster, easily accessible in the same spot. They're comfortable, they're easy to carry, and they're inexpensive. So the field and stream allows you to have your pistol and your magazine in the same place, makes it really easy to hide, easy to carry, and your magazine is always in the same spot relative to your pistol. So it makes it really easy to use. These start at only $90 in plain leather, either in black or tan. You can get ox blood for, I think, $10 extra. And there's all kind of different tooling options you can get on them. You can get them fully carved. You can get them tooled in different patterns, fish scales, basket wigs, whatever you want. But the basic holster, which is what this is, it's a good looking holster and it's only 90 bucks from Rob Leahy at simplyrugged.com. Springfield Armory's new Garrison Commander 1911 pistol, as does the rest of the Garrison line, offers a wonderful value for the money. It very nicely occupies a midpoint between the standard GI models and the more tricked out versions. They look good. They're finished out very nicely. This blue version is, is, has a very nice blue finish on it. The slide and frame flats are nicely polished and the rounded top of the slide along with the bottom of the frame and all that are matte finished which allows you to not have much sun glare when you're bearing down on it. It's a nice professional commercial finish on these. They look good. They shoot wonderfully. They're just a fine pistol for the price. MSRP on these, which applies to the Garrison full size as well as the Garrison Commander in blue are $868, either in 45 or 9 millimeter. They're also available in stainless steel in blue or 9 millimeter for $917 MSRP. It represents a fine value. You can spend a whole lot more on a 1911 and not get nearly as much in features and in reliability. To find a dealer in your area who can get you one of these Springfield Armory Garrison pistols, go to Lipsy's website at lipsys.com, click on their dealer finder, put in your zip code, and they will give you a list of dealers in your specified radius that can get you one of these. This makes it easier to find and obtain the guns that you're looking for because Lipsy's has a nationwide network of dealers and they're a huge distributor with a whole lot of buying power. So chances are there's somebody around you that's affiliated with Lipsy's that can get you one of these. So check out the Garrison 1911 line and other Springfield Armory products at springfieldarmory.com.
lot of years now, North American Arms has been making those little uh, mini revolvers, so little five-shot revolvers, short barrel, little pocket guns. Uh, most often thought up as uh, as uh, carry for backup. Uh, pick it up, folks. Let me start over.